Hello, my name is Andrew Thake. I'm from Minds and Money. Delighted to be joined with us today by Mars Cord, who's president and CEO of Warbridge Mining. Delighted to have you with us today, Mars. Well, thanks, Andrew. Thanks for inviting us. Good, good, good. Um, I think that our, our um, uh, listeners are very interested in learning a bit more about uh, Warbridge and specifically your Fenella Gold project. Would you like to go and tell us a little bit more? Sure. So, I mean, at Warbridge, uh, we focused on uh, advancing our uh, flagship Fenelon project, as well as the uh, nearby uh, Martinier property. Both of them have the potential to uh, support open pit and underground mining. And they're both located uh, close to existing infrastructure like uh, hydropower, hydroelectric power, and transportation infrastructure along, <coughs> excuse me, the D2 Fenelon gold trend that's in Northern Quebec in Canada. Uh, last November, we published our maiden mineral resource estimate at Fenelon, as well as an updated mineral resource estimate at Martinier. And together we have about 2.7 million ounces of indicated category in gold resources, as well as 1.7 million in the in third category. And we believe both the size and the quality of this resource will continue to increase and uh, improve the uh, near term uh, as we continue our this ex uh, aggressive exploration program in this year to reach the next milestone. Now, both Fanon and Martinier, we believe they're, uh, you know, currently have much more potential to grow. But more importantly, there are other deposits that are waiting to be discovered on this large land package that we own uh, roughly about 900 square kilometers and over 97 kilometers stretch uh, of the strike length along this um, northern Abitibi belt, which is similar to the southern Abitibi uh, belt, such as the Val d'Or to Rouen Noranda or in the Timmins Kirk Lake camp, except for it hasn't seen over 100 years of uh, exploration and mining and hasn't seen yet over 100 million ounces of, of gold over the similar strike distance. Uh, we have our largest shareholders that uh, include some of the bigger names like Eric Sprott uh, and Agnico Eagle, who collectively own a little close to about 30% of our company. This year's aggressive exploration program is focusing really on expanding the resources at both Fenelon and Martinier, and the results of those will be supporting the uh, you know, future uh, economic studies that are uh, expected to be happening in 2023. Now, we also understand that uh, projects like this uh, need, it needs to be really evaluated uh, with uh, partnership with our First Nation commun uh, communities as well as the surrounding communities. That's why uh, we've uh, really partnered up with, uh, with, with our First Nations. In fact, something to note that more than 30% of our workforce at Fenelon currently is comprised of First Nation community members. And uh, we just uh, 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 published uh, our inaugural sustainability report that really uh, sets the stage for us to be able to uh, have sustainable operations for decades to come. Well, thank you for, for like a really eloquent summary of Warbridge Mining. Um, one thing that I know that investors are always keen is learning a bit more about your management team. Um, firstly, what's your background before joining Warbridge? Sure, I'm a mining engineer by trade. I work for a company named Falconbridge, which is now owned by Glencore uh -huh. uh, for about 12 years. Uh, between Sudbury and Timmins in Ontario, Canada, uh, mm -hmm. all the way to the underground mine superintendent. So I, have, I had the operations ex experience, uh, started a consulting company and later on sold it to a large multinational company called WSP. And mm -hmm. then we used my company as a platform to be able to develop their mining business. And over the uh, four years that I was with them, I actually managed to be involved in about 12 acquisitions and really growing that company. And Walbridge at the time, about 2011, was looking to transition itself from an explorer to a, you know, a pure explorer to a cash flow generator. And that's when my experience in terms of operations engineering and uh, M&A uh, was suiting that. And that's when I joined Walbridge in 2011. Uh, we assembled a team just about late 2015 looking for uh, M&A uh, projects and we came across this Fenelon property that we purchased from uh, Balmoral in late 2016. And since then, obviously, our uh, successful exploration has, has allowed us to be able to not only advance the project at Fenelon, but more importantly, amass this large land package as a result of our acquisition of Balmoral resources as a whole. So that's my experience. Uh, we have a very good team that we've built as a fit for purpose along the way as we continue to grow. Our CFO is Brian Penny who is a founding CFO of Kinross, and then later on with, uh, you know, 
New Gold prior to joining Walbridge. Frank Demers, who's our VP of Mining, Mining and Projects, ran the KGHM operations in Canada. And Attila Pentec, who really started as a student with us doing his master's pro uh, program and then later on his PhD, has progressively grown to be our VP of exploration. So, so we're very uh, uh, fortunate to have been able to build this team and we continue to build that team as we continue to grow the project and the grow the company. Um, in terms of, you talked a little bit about the, your ESG credentials earlier. Um, you mentioned the fantastic work you're doing with the First Nations. Can you just go into a little bit more like depth there? Because it seems to be that you've really like um, embraced this and, and almost like turned what could be a potential problem or challenge into sort of like something that seems to be like adding sort of like value to the to Woolwich Mines business. Sure. I mean, I mean, the whole industry, mining industry as a whole, has been doing a lot of good things over the past many years. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the unfortunate parts is that we never really boasted them in terms of a report, you know, mm -hmm. in terms of a sustainability <laughs> one. But coming back to Warbridge, we've been doing a lot of the good things. And we just, in our inaugural sustainability report, we really delivered what we've done over the past few years. One of the key things for us is that if you are going to uh, advance a project, you need to discuss your project right from the beginning with your partners, the First mm -hmm. Nation partners, the communities. So when we get in, when we purchased Fenelon, it was our first foray into Quebec. And one of the first things we decided to do is go to our neighbors and explain who we are, what we're trying to do. And since then, initially, we started on a monthly report of what we did last month and what we plan to do next month. Now it's actually turning into a weekly discussions with them, going over the project, what our needs are in terms of contracting, in terms of resources, in terms of projects that we're you know, advancing. And that partnership has, built, has been built on a very good so solid foundation that we believe is going to allow us to be able to advance our project with them as partners. Mm -hmm. In terms of the investors that you've already got on board, the one the name that obviously jumps out is Eric Sprott. Um, that's almost sort of like, you know, a badge for like, you know, if Eric Sprott's like invested in it, then the project must be good. How did you get on board, Eric? Well, obviously, Eric Sprott is a well-known name in the industry in terms of investment. Eric, mm -hmm. Eric Sprott has invested in many companies in, 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 in this industry. Uh, we perhaps could say that his, his last foray into junior mining was about 2018. When we had, uh, you know, when we were continuing to deliver the results of our bulk sample at Fenelon with, you know, with fantastic results in terms of that, and Eric wanted to be a part, you know, a shareholder in the company, and he's been obviously continued to support the company. But I think what's more important about our project is the fact that it has to speak for itself rather than have someone else speak for it, sure. and that's the reason why we believe that, you know, our other shareholder is. Uh, Agnico Eagle, which used to be Kirk and Lake Gold. They're mm -hmm. close to about 10% shareholder of our company. So, so our project is speaking for itself rather than someone else like mm -hmm. Eric speak for itself. And that's exactly why we talked about the multi-million ounce potential, which in November of last year, we delivered that it actually, in fact, is multi-million ounce deposit. Now we're talking about this growth potential, not only at Fenelon and Martinique, but along the belt. Mm -hmm. Are you able to give us an idea what your potential end game might be? You mentioned you obviously got like Nico Eagle as, as a sort of like a partner, which is obviously great. But is your is your like end game to go and take these mines into production? Is your end game to go and eventually go and look to sort of like sell off and be acquired? Are you very open about it? Or well, look, I mean, if any exploration company's end game is going to be just to sell the company. They're not adding any value because obviously mm -hmm. it's just going to keep the lights on and continue sure. diluting. But at least if yeah. we have done, if we have raised and diluted, we've actually, you know, advancing, been advancing the project. So our our main focus is to bring this project to its ultimate stage, which would be production. As mm -hmm. I've always said along the way, if there is a strategic partner or other groups that are interested and want to provide us with some idea that is better for our shareholders rather than us going alone, then obviously we're going to sit down and listen to it. The project itself will allow the company to decide whether they can do it or not uh, by themselves. You know, obviously today our market caps around 250 to 300 million dollar US. If we were to uh, embark on a very large D2 size type project with over a billion dollar capital expenditure, obviously we're going to have mm -hmm. to need some sort of a partnership with somebody. However, mm -hmm. if we can look at it in terms of an underground, uh, you know, development of this, 
perhaps it would require less of a capital that the company itself can do. So, so those questions have not been, uh, we're not there to be able to answer them. That's exactly why the 22, 2022 exploration program that we've identified, hopefully will bring us to that milestone that will be able to determine what is the optimum size of the deposit in terms of its open pit potential, in terms of its underground potential. Can it be scaled so we'd be able to do it ourselves or does it require a large capex? And all of those will be answered after an updated resource estimate and then subsequently to an economic study, which is what we're trying to work on towards. Mm -hmm. Well, as far as um, I can see, you've got a fantastic project, you know, fantastic sort of uh, uh, assets, brilliant management team. Love it that you've got some fantastic ESG credentials, working in a great jurisdiction as well. Delighted to go and have your Minds of Money TV. That was Mars Cord, President and Chief Executive Officer of Warbridge Mining. Thanks, Andrew.